Hey y'all, it's um early in the morning and I'm up. Um, can't get me sleep tonight. Uh, I remember being young and when I was young, the idea of uh, suicide was just so foreign to me. Um, and it was, it was unimaginable, you know, um, and I think that's because although I had it, it experienced a lot of trauma during the early stages of my life, um, I had a great support system. So it wasn't, uh, it didn't affect me in a way to where I would want to in in life, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just couldn't understand how something can be so bad that you would want to, you know, unalive yourself and, and kill yourself because that, that, that sounded like such a permanent, which it is, um, result an option and, and, an extreme option to, what is probably a temporary feeling or thing that you're going through. Um, most things I would say that we go through, most experiences and situations that we find ourselves in that bring us down and, and that uh, causes us to not feel like ourselves that causes depression and sadness and despair most of those situations are fixable and they're temporary but for some people what they're going through isn't temporary or has the potential to be long lasting or never ending and that's what we don't want to talk about. We don't want to talk about the, the, the battles that we face, the trials and tribulations that some of us face, that there is no foreseeable end to. Some of us are in holes where there isn't a light at the end in tunnels where there isn't a light at the end what do you do in situations like that I have a cousin right now who um, last year around this time maybe a little later uh, during last year um went to get a procedure <clears throat> and she put her trust in a doctor who not only didn't have any experience doing this performing this particular surgery but um had a history of not giving a fuck not giving a fuck about fucking somebody life over and experimenting with someone's life and performing a surgery on them that he know that they are not uh, physically in shape to get or they're not in the right condition to, to receive. So during the consultation, when they uh, did all these scans and x-rays and stuff like that, uh, it, was, it was later determined that she shouldn't have gotten the surgery done, some sort of weight loss surgery, but she shouldn't have gotten it done because she had too much scar 
tissue from a previous surgery or surgeries that had been performed. And so this surgery uh, was considered ill-advised, not recommended. But he didn't tell her that because he wanted the money. So he said, fuck the, 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 the fact that she can lo could lose her life. Fuck the fact that this surgery could um, compromise her health or reduce her health. So fuck the fact that this surgery could cause some lingering uh, and it, lingering uh, effects or life changing Uh, I, I don't care about that. It's all about the money for me. And so now she's been in and out the hospital. Every time you turn around, she has a new infection. They don't know. The doctors don't even know what to do. Why isn't he being held accountable? I have no idea. They're trying to open up a lawsuit on him now. But she's in such a a a dark space where she really wants to give up. She's in a lot of pain. She can't eat. Um, her stomach is always throwing up food. Uh, it's just one thing after another. Her um, cousin who was much older than her, she's in her 30s, her cousin who was uh, in her 60s recently died because of complications um, from the surgery that the same doctor performed. Uh, on her This doctor also performed the same surgery On the older cousin Who was in her 60s And she didn't make it Since they both received the, got the surgery done um, In April of last year Their health has both been on Like a steady decline They've been in and out the hospital For one reason or another But it's all basically The result of that initial surgery that they had. And she wants to give up now. She has four kids. She wants to give up. Um, it, it, it just. It, it don't feel good. It really don't. Because. You can look at the, the faces of the doctors. They just look like we don't know what to do. He did something to her stomach and it's just been causing infections and it, it caused complications that caused more complications that now has, you know, caused infections in her kidneys and in other organs and parts of her body are, are failing now. It's just like, what the fuck? So me, as usual, I'm struggling and fighting uh, OCD. And, um, I gotta be honest, man. And sometimes I, I really be feeling like checking out, you know, um, you know, you know, people don't understand. And she said this when I talked to her earlier, like, I'd rather just like die. I'd really rather just like die. People don't understand what it's like to be at a dead end, rock bottom, when the mental pain is so great. Hmm. For people who don't suffer with a mental illness, let me let me let me explain it to you like this. What we feel mentally is equivalent to <coughs> Physically being placed in a fucking oven. That's the way I would describe the pain that we, we have to 
deal with and shoulder every day from the moment we wake up to the moment we close our eyes at night. And the only peace that we get is when we're asleep. So when you go through these, these obstacles and you're faced with these, these hurdles, your perception changes. You don't value life anymore. Death becomes something that you develop a, a, a liking for. You begin to yarn it. You begin to inquire. Desire. Even though you don't really know what comes after death. We all believe that it's just complete darkness. But because life is no longer something that is that feels like a privilege. It's, it's no longer something that's enjoyable. The way it is for most people. The way it is maybe for you. We no longer want to be here. Because we feel like the pain is too great. And we don't and we don't see an immediate or a soon to be fix or solution to our problems. Every time we keep fighting and giving it another shot and thinking that there is hope that things would change, it doesn't. <laughs> At least not soon enough. And so when people say continue to fight, how long is a person supposed to fight while suffering before they throw in the towel and give up? Is life truly that precious? I know we only get one, but is it so precious and worth living that one should suffer and be unhappy just to what? Say they didn't give up? Isn't that like cruel, unusual punishment? Isn't that wicked to, to want to see someone suffer? Do we place our own selfish desires to, to for them to be here before their peace and happiness? Because no matter how much I love someone, I would rather them be at peace, no suffering, no crying and if, if the only way for them to achieve that is to be dead, I'd rather them be dead than to be uh, alive and, and suffering for some people, life is hell for some people, living is hell may not be for you and it's easy for you to say you would never give up because you've never been at rock bottom, there's no way you can say that you've been at rock bottom if you don't understand what it is to give up, you think you may have been at rock bottom, but you weren't you weren't. It could always be worse than what you experience. I thought I hit rock bottom years ago. It What I was going through years ago can't touch what I am going through now. So this is why people who are suicidal have this perspective. They're suffering. Equated to being in an oven, burning. What they're going through is insufferable. They cannot mentally cope with it. They can't deal with it. They can't handle it. And I don't think people understand that. People want to believe that there's always an answer. There's always a solution. What if it isn't? What is that person to do? Just continue living and suffering you'd be surprised that some of the things that people go through mentally that you have no clue or idea about 
you didn't you can't even begin to fathom it because you never experienced it. You never been in touch with it. You never been in this world. This is a different rim. So before you tell somebody that killing themselves is weak and that being suicidal makes them weak, shut up. Because you're ignorant and you're stupid to speak on something you have no knowledge of. When you haven't walked in that person's shoes for a day. I'm going through it now. My, my mental illness has only gotten worse. Unfortunately, you know, they say this is what happens with mental illnesses like bipolar and schizophrenia, anxiety, which is what I have, OCD, which is what I have. It, 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 it gets worse before it gets better. And they, they say that like in your, in your, your 30s is when it's at its worst. Man, I, I tell you, it just, it, it'd be so bad, bro. I'd be trying to pull hope from somewhere. Pull hope from out my ass. Like, I need some reason to want to live. I need, I need some reason what can I hope? What, what can give me joy? What is there just one thing that could inspire me to want to fight, to, to continue fighting? Because I'm losing reasons. Life is brutal for some people. It's it's been unkind to me. And um you know, I just don't value it anymore like most people do. I don't see uh, death as a bad thing. For me it's just peace. Eyes closed, not unaware, unknowing. If death is truly blankness, I would take that than living and suffering. Because the life that y'all say is worth living, we're not experiencing that. We're experiencing hell. That's the difference. So yeah, for you, the idea of suicide may sound crazy. But for us, it's not such a bad idea. Jayla 47.